Hey y'all, welcome to 8-Bit Gospel. This is another one of our Wednesday night evenings where we talk about the 8-bit or the small structure building blocks of the good news of God's Word and how that applies to our lives and, and what is He saying tonight. So we're going to be in Luke chapter 11 and um, we're going to be talking about prayer and um, relationship with God and what it means to be of Him or to not be of Him. And uh, so before we get started with that, I uh, want to just welcome you, say glad to have you, glad to be sharing this time with you, um, and then let's pray. So, Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for times like these and technology like this to be able to um, spend with you. And I, I pray that, um, that through this time, as we read your word and we listen to what you're saying and um, as we reflect on the words that you have said to us, I pray that you, um, that you change us, that you draw us closer to you. Um, I pray that you help us hear what you're saying. Um, and I pray that you use us, despite uh, us even, to, um, to be your light in the world. And I'm grateful for the fact that you are the light of the world and and Lord, we're so grateful that you have risen and uh, you're coming back. So we pray all of these things, believing and in faith and uh, expectant for what you're going to do in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. All right. So I hope that you're having a good week. Um, and if your week has been anything like my past couple weeks, is uh, it's been a lot of time at home. <laughs> it's been a lot of... Um, time on the couch, and I think I have I used a lot of this time to be very restful, um, and now I feel like I've not got any structure in my life at all, so um, that's that's been kind of interesting and, and uh, fun in a weird way, um, but as as experiencing change of schedule and structure and um, all the things that are required of, of me, and I'm sure that you've experienced too, because um, things are different than they were, there comes with it some, some differences in our relationship with God. And um, I've found that I have spent less time with him because I kind of convinced myself that I need him less because I'm not really doing anything. Um, I'm still going to work a little bit and still preparing for times like these, um, but it's less than it was. And uh, it's just more time at home, which is restful and it's good, but um, time with him is different than it was before. And so we're coming here to Luke 11, and you know, we've been discussing what Jesus' words to his disciples have been and what he's been um, speaking to to the people of Israel as he walked the earth and did all these signs. And um, so we're just going to walk through some of this chapter. And um, it's by prayer that this meets you where you are. Um, and we may be in all completely different places, but I, I do believe that when God speaks from his word and we take the time to sit down and listen to it, that he's going to speak directly to you and it's going to be applicable. And so um, as we gather before him and, and listen to this, uh, it's starting with the Lord's Prayer. And so the disciples, they come to him and they ask Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. Because they see him using some of his spare time to go alone and to pray. So they say, how, how, do, we, how do we pray? And Jesus says, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Don't bother me, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he's his friend, yet because of his impudence or because this person at the door keeps knocking and saying, hey, 
uh, get up, give me some bread. Uh, it's because of his impudence he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So we'll pause there for, for a moment and um, reflect on what he said. So he, he teaches them how to pray, saying, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Um, give us this day every, our daily bread and everything that we need for tomorrow. Um, and forgive us our sins as we ourselves forgive everyone who's indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And then he gives this really odd story of someone who gets up in the middle of the night and goes to their neighbor's house or their friend's house and knocks on the door saying, hey, some person I wasn't expecting has come and I don't have anything to feed them and I need you to give me some bread. And the friend's like, nah, bro, <laughs> come in the morning. This is, it's midnight. It's two in the morning. Why am I going to get up and give you bread? No. Uh, but because he continues to knock and say, help me, help me, help me, then his friend's going to get up and give him what he's asking for. And uh, then he says, look, even if you who are evil, even if you who make mistakes and are, are struggling as parents or as a person, like if you'll still give good gifts to those people that you love, of course, God in heaven is going to give good gifts to his people. And it says, of course, he's going to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. And um, here's something about following God, because when you follow him and you put your belief in him, he, he comes and dwells in your heart, in your, in your life, and in your very being. Um, he is with you and gives the counsel, gives, the, gives his power from on high to dwell within you. And he f sets you free from the bondage of sin and death and sets you on his path to light and new life. It, it's a glorious thing, and it's something that we can't do ourselves um, and he's, he says here, he's going to give the Holy Spirit to you if you ask him. And if you don't feel it, if you're not having the feelings of being close to God or feeling like his power is on you, or, or if you're feeling particularly trapped in sin and death, ask. And if you still feel that way, ask again and again and again. Seek God and continue to knock on the door until until he comes and fills you with his very spirit. Because he wants us to want him. He wants us to want him. And he's made the way and the promise that he will hear and provide his very self to dwell with us. And so it's in that context, which is so cool, that then these, these next verses come. And uh, to... To summarize this next section, he's, he's casting out demons, which he's been doing for this whole time, but they start to accuse him saying, oh, he's only casting out demons by the name of Satan himself. And, and Jesus is like, that's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That, no, that's, that's not how this works. Because if, if I were casting out evil by evil, then it would, it would be like tearing um, the house apart. I'm going to use his words here. He says, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Um, but if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, or Satan, or the devil, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if, this is verse 20, but if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Um, when a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Um, when I read this, y'all, I, I felt like personally spoken to because I think up until this 
um, experience of, or in the last couple months, I've been really kind of relying on my strength and my ability to accomplish the things that I set out to do. And um, Jesus is saying here, it doesn't matter how strong you are, but there's going to come one who's stronger than you. And when that one comes who's stronger than you, you'll be defeated. It's just that simple. The stronger the one wins. And you should be aware of that. And, and then he follows that up to say, look, if you're not with me, you're against me. And if you do not gather with me, you're going to scatter. And you're going to not have that strength to rely on. Jesus is the strongest. He defeated death. He created all of life in the world. He is, he is God. There's no one stronger than him. And he's saying, if, if you want to put your trust in strength, let it not be your own strength, but let it be him. Let it be him. Um, and then he goes on talking about the unclean spirit. And if, if, if you're freed from this spirit, it'll leave, it'll go into all these different places, and then it'll come back and find the home that it used to be in, swept and made clean. And then it'll say, oh, I'm going to go get some friends. And it goes and gathers seven others and comes back. And then the person is now in more bondage than they were before. And I don't know about you, but I've experienced that to be very, very true in my life. Is it, If I rely on my own strength to keep me safe, then sometimes it comes back. Um, the, the things that I struggle with, Paul describes them as the thorns in the flesh or... Um, or the temptations or of the world or the pride of life and all the things that it means to be human and to struggle with. And, and it's difficult to follow God. Um, but he says, return to me and I'll return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Um, and he is the strongest one to rely on. He says further in, in verses 29 through 32, to summarize that for you, is that these people continue to come to Jesus saying, give us a sign, give us a sign, give us a sign, so that we know that you're God, so that we know that you're strong enough and powerful and, and worthy of our trust and worthy of our hope. And he's like, how many more signs do I have to give you? Blessed are those who um, have not seen and yet believe, he tells Thomas. And here he says, you'll have nothing other than the sign of Jonah. And we're going to stop here uh, today because it's so pertinent to where we are right now, just after Easter. He says, you will not be given a sign other than the sign of Jonah. What does that mean? The sign of Jonah to the Ninevites was that there were three days of, um, of darkness for Jonah. And then the return to the light and the salvation was promised and jonah came and preached to the ninevites saying repent and turn to god because judgment is coming and he's going to destroy your entire city and jonah was preaching this from experience saying god had told him to go do this thing and he ran away from god and this you know, fish swallowed him up, and he was in this tomb of death for three days, and then spit out with this message of of salvation and and repentance and humble or hum, humbleness, humility before God, right? Humility before God. And so, if the sign of Jonah that Jesus is telling these people has been given to them, Jesus came and served. We heard that on Sunday. He served every person. He loved them. Then he even willingly was killed by them, by, by us, even for the sake of our own sin. And he was dead for three days. And then he rose again and defeated death, proving that he is stronger than it that he is all-powerful, and that the salvation he's promised is certain. We don't have to look for any other sign. We don't have to look anywhere else. When we're seeking freedom and security and stability in times where we don't feel secure or st stable or 
um, where we don't know what to do at, or what to feel or, or what's next or any of these things. So that message is the same message to you tonight. Is Come, put your faith and your trust in God. Seek Him and ask for Him to enter into your life and He'll save you. He will. And not just will he save you in this life, but he'll save you with eternal life. And that's the glorious promise that our God gives to us tonight. Thank you for listening. This is the good news of the gospel. And I pray that, um, that you hear these words and let them sink in deep and that you do not stray from them. But it's also my prayer that when you do, that you will have prayed until then, that when that day comes, that he will be right there with you so that when, when the enemy comes and attacks, you can remember his promise saying, I will never leave you or forsake you, and that he who has won the victory is with you still. Um, praise the Lord for that being the truth. So let's pray. And then we'll be done. So, Lord, we are thankful for your word and how you speak and this message of hope that you've given tonight. And so I pray that you, you reach into our lives, Lord, and, and I, I pray tonight that, that you draw us to yourself, that you show us Show us your goodness and show us yourself. Lord, I want to see you. And I want to be near you. And I want those who are watching this to see you and to be near you. And that's why we're doing this. And Lord, the truth is we need you. I know that I even need you to want to to be near you. <laughs> and I wish that I could want to be near you all the time. And sometimes that feeling is just not there. So Lord, I, I pray that you even come now and ignite your fire in all of us that we can that we can know you more. And if we don't know you, if we've never put our trust or our faith in you, it, if someone watching this tonight or listening hasn't, Lord, uh, I pray that you, that you save their souls and show them your power I'm grateful that for those who have put their faith in you and for those who haven't yet, that you've given this, this path, this, this guide to say, pray this, our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, not mine, on earth as it is in heaven. Give me today my daily bread, everything that I need, which is, which is you and I have needs, please provide for me today. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us where we've failed. Forgive us where we've strayed from you. and um, Forgive us as we forgive other people. It can be a tall order, I, am, I know. Um, and lead us not to, into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from evil because yours is the power and the glory forever. You're God. You're all-powerful. And I trust you. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Y'all, it's been a pleasure like it always is. I love opening the Word with you. And um, even if it's like this... Uh, apart uh, from you physically. I know that his spirit unites us all together. 
in times like these. So um, thank you for listening and watching and being here. And until next time, go Chiefs.